text for our consideration this morning comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5. The reading begins at verse 1. Now when he saw the crowds, he went up on a mountainside and sat down. His disciples came to him, and he began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is the word of our God. Amen. Amen. It's difficult to tailor a speech or a sermon some kind of message that you're trying to share with another person, it's difficult to tailor that to all the different people who might be listening to you. And, for example, if one was to give a little devotion for children, you'd have to take into account the different ages of the children, their different life experiences, the fact that a three-year-old is very different from a ten-year-old. Obviously, I'm very good at it. (laughs) No, I'm terrible. That's not the point. If you're giving a speech towards somebody, you have to consider that somebody who is 95 has very different life experiences from somebody who's five. And they're going to expect different kinds of vocabulary. They're going to react to different words and different expressions and even different thoughts. You'd have to communicate in different kinds of ways. And I say all that not because I want all of us to talk about preaching in general, but when Jesus was delivering this message, the Sermon on the Mount, this is his big sermon that we have recorded. This is the most famous sermon in history, and it's right here, and it takes three chapters. And it's just worth considering. When Jesus was starting out, and he was speaking to those giant crowds that were around him, at the height of his popularity in ministry, what did he say to them? What did he want them to understand? How did he get their attention? And once he had their attention, what did he tell them? This is the Sermon on the Mount, and this section is called the Beatitudes. And it's related to a word that talks about being blessed. And here Jesus says, a lot of people are blessed, and it's not the kind of people that we would expect him to say are blessed. Jesus went up on a mountain, and he saw the crowds, and he began to teach them. And his disciples sat down, and everybody was paying attention to Jesus. And he preached at other times. He preached in the synagogues. One time he preached on a boat to people who were on the shore. He preached in houses. He preached in roads. He, pretty much everywhere, Jesus was preaching. But now that everybody was around him, he wanted them to understand something. He wanted them to understand that even though these were people who were waiting, they were already blessed. And he says, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And this might not be surprising to you because these words could be very familiar. And once again, I have to tailor my message because I don't know if you are just hearing these words for the first time or if you've heard these words read hundreds of times. But when Jesus would have been saying these words, and these people were hearing it for the very first time, this would have been surprising. Blessed are the poor in spirit. I don't think so. First of all, I'm not sure that the poor in general are blessed by God. If they were blessed by God, they wouldn't be poor. That just stands to reason. If you look through the Old Testament, people that God blessed, God blessed Abraham. God blessed David. God blessed Solomon. God blessed people with stuff. He gave them wealth, possessions, and status. Clearly, those people were blessed. How can the poor 
be blessed. Just the idea that Jesus would start out, here's what I want you to know. Blessed are the poor. Are you sure, Jesus? Are you really taking care of those people? But he doesn't just say, blessed are the poor. Although if you read the account in Luke, Luke focuses on the poor aspect of it. But here in Matthew, we see blessed are the poor in spirit. Well, what does that mean? Does that mean that Jesus is talking about people who are depressed and downtrodden, and because of their status, God says, you are blessed. Well, with all these things that Jesus says, people disagree. Some people say, Jesus says, if you do these things, then you will be blessed. I think it's the other way around. Jesus says, people who are these things, and he's speaking to his faithful believers, Jesus recognizes there's a lot of people there that day that don't really care about who he is or what he's trying to do. They just wanted to see a miracle. And they heard he was the popular preacher, so they came to see him. But Jesus is speaking to a group of people within that larger group that is faithful, people that are believers, people that have been waiting for him their entire lives, and now they get to hear him speak. And to them, Jesus says, blessed are the poor in spirit. And we recognize that Christians are not always happy. They're not always joyful. Sometimes they feel very down. But Jesus isn't recommending that we continue to feel down over and over and over again. He doesn't say, blessed are the poor in spirit who always are disappointed. He just says they're blessed. Blessed are the poor in spirit. These are people that the world would say are poor in spirit. If the world was going to point to somebody who was rich in spirit, they wouldn't point to faithful believers. They would say people who are filled in their spirits with activities, with drinks, with company, those people are blessed. I want to be like that. But Jesus says, blessed are the poor in spirit. But even then, he's not talking necessarily about people who find comfort in activities or something to drink or something to listen to or something to watch. He's talking about people who recognize who they are and who God is. And Christians are poor in spirit, not because of anything that has happened to them, but because they recognize everybody is poor in spirit. And everybody can only be filled by God. We have the image of two men praying to God, and Jesus talked about this in one of his other messages that he delivered. He said there were two men who prayed to God, and one of them was a Pharisee, and he looked up to heaven and he said, I thank you, God, that I'm not like other men but then there was a second man. He was a tax collector. And he wouldn't even look up to God, but he said, Lord, have mercy on me because I'm a sinner. Jesus commends that second attitude. One who says, when I come before God, I don't have armfuls of things that I'm bringing him. I don't have a heart that is full of love for people all the time, but I recognize compared to God, I'm nothing. My spirit is not full. My spirit is empty. I'm spiritually bankrupt in the sight of the almighty and perfect God, and only he can fill me up. So, Lord, I come to you with empty hands. I am poor in spirit. Can you fill me up? And Jesus said to those people that heard him that day and understand his words, yes, you will be filled. In fact, Yours is the kingdom of heaven. And he doesn't say, far off in the distance, one day you're going to die and go to heaven. He says, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Even as we're living on this earth and waiting for Jesus to come back and waiting for the fulfillment of all of God's promises, already 
God says, right now, yours is the kingdom of heaven. You can have confidence in that fact. It's as good as it's already happened because I told you it's coming. In fact, you already have it. And Jesus says, blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Christians have a lot of reason to be unhappy. I don't know if it's a coincidence that everybody in church has a loved one that they've lost, or if that's just sort of the way that it turns out. I guess there's a lot of people in the world who have lost loved ones, family members, friends. People cry and are sad for all sorts of different kinds of reasons. And Jesus says those who mourn will be comforted. And so there's a part of us that recognizes that we're looking forward to seeing our loved ones again. To those who have passed away in the faith before us, to those who trusted in Jesus, our fathers and mothers, our grandparents, siblings, children. How wonderful it'll be to get to see those people again, to really be comforted. But that's not quite what Jesus is saying. As Jesus was talking to those people that day, there was a group there that mourned over what had happened to Israel. How it had come from its former glory under King David and under King Solomon, and even under some of the later kings like Jeroboam II, if you know that name. How its, its borders had become wide, but then the people fell away from God, and then they were captured, repeatedly. And right now they were being ruled by the Romans. And those people mourned for the loss of their great nation that now wasn't so great anymore. And they said, Lord, when are you going to restore Israel to the way it used to be? When are you going to free us again? And of those people there that day, they were also a portion that mourned because the spiritual condition of Israel had declined. And you'll notice that if you continue to read through the Gospels, when Jesus was there, he confronted the religious leaders over and over and over again. He said, you people, you don't care. You don't care about Israel. You don't care about these people. You burden them, and you don't lift it off their shoulders. You give them rules and regulations, but you don't talk to them about forgiveness. And to those people who mourned, Jesus said, you will be comforted. The spiritual state of this country will be restored. One day this country will be restored, but it's not, it's not in the way that you think. There are a lot of people there that were excited to see Jesus because they thought he was the Messiah who was going to set them free from the Romans, and they were only half right. Jesus is the Messiah, but he was, set to, he was, he was sent to set people free from sin. And Jesus said those godly people who mourn over this country, godly people in America who mourn over our country, they will be comforted. Because I have come here today, not me, Jesus. Jesus came. He came to comfort those people. He came to bring the kingdom of heaven. And he lived for those people. And he preached and he healed the sick. But then even more important than that, he died on the cross to forgive all of their sins, to redeem the land of Israel, to redeem all of God's people, to redeem all humanity. Jesus died on the cross to take away the sins of those people, to take away your sins, to promise you the kingdom of heaven, to promise you that when you mourn, you will be comforted because a better country than this one is coming. One day, all hearts will be fixed solely on Jesus and not on anybody else. And those of you who mourn for your loved ones who are lost, you will see them again. Because as Jesus says, those who mourn will be comforted. And for the poor in spirit, the kingdom of heaven is coming. In fact, It's partly already yours. 
Jesus has a lot more to say. Blessed are the meek. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Blessed are the merciful. Blessed are the pure in heart. I think that's worth commenting on. Blessed are the pure in heart. When the Jewish leaders, the Pharisees, when those people talked about purity, they didn't care about purity of heart. They care about following all the rules and regulations. They cared about being physically clean. They cared about washing and bringing sacrifices, but they didn't really care about how they treated other people. They didn't really care about what was inside. They didn't really care about the idea that, yeah, maybe I hate somebody, but that's all right. I'll just bring another sacrifice. Yeah, maybe I abuse my position and I take advantage of people, but that's not really that bad because I have uh, washed my hands with water in a ceremonial way, and now I'm clean, I'm pure. Jesus doesn't say that's good. He doesn't recommend that kind of behavior. He says, blessed are the pure in heart. The people who have read what God has to say in his word, and they've actually applied it to themselves. The people who are trying to make a difference in their lives, not just washing your hands, not just bringing a sacrifice, not just bringing an offering. God wants you to bring offerings, but if that doesn't change the way that you treat other people, then your heart is still messed up. And that should be your primary focus. So on that day, Jesus says, blessed are the pure in heart. Blessed are the peacemakers. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness. Blessed are those who, with their lives, have showed that they understand who the Messiah is and why he was sent. They know God, and we can see that in their lives. Good things are coming to those people. When Jesus was at the height of his popularity, that's what he told people. And that's what he wanted them to understand. Jesus didn't say things were not going to get hard ever. And that life was going to be easy. And ministry was going to be easy. And this giant crowd that was spread out before Jesus that day would always be there. He did not say that. He said, blessed are you when you are persecuted, because you will be persecuted. But Jesus wanted us to understand that we are blessed right now. We already possess the kingdom of heaven. You have forgiveness of sins. And Jesus says, for all of you who have spent your lives working, working in faith, working for the good of the kingdom, to help out others, for everything that you have done in faith, it is not in vain, but you have a reward coming. You have heaven before you, and you have peace of mind and of soul. All of you, Jesus says, are blessed. Amen.